Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we have some big updates on a potential new deal. Rumors have been circulating that Joe Manchin is willing to do a smaller stimulus package, which focuses on tax changes. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how those tax changes could lead to a massive increase in social security benefits, SSI and SSDI, potentially a Medicare expansion as well. So let's discuss the details, but before we jump into it, as always, if you guys could do me a quick favor, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and share this channel with anyone who you think might find this helpful. This is a community for seniors, and my job here is to be a voice for you and be a voice for seniors to make sure President Biden keeps his promise to increase social security, increase SSI and SSDI, and potentially even approve a stimulus check for seniors in this next stimulus package. So thank you so much for supporting our work. And with that said, before we talk about this potential new deal and how that could relate to benefits, let's do a quick update on daily trending news. Now, Social Security, the Social Security Administration has been talking about reopening its field offices for the last six months. Now, with the new variant getting worse, they had to push that back. But now it's looking like these field offices should be opening on March 30th. So if you're someone who struggles with the phone or with their websites, this is good news for you because in about six to seven weeks, we should see the field offices reopen, making things easier in regards to managing your benefits. I will keep you posted because in the past, they have pushed this date back, especially because Social Security employees really aren't looking forward to going back to the office. So let me know in the comments, guys, are you looking forward to the field offices reopening or are you okay with using their phone number and the website? Now, from my personal experience, I've actually called the administration myself just to try and gather some info for these videos. And typically I've been on hold for at least 20 minutes, sometimes as much as an hour and a half. Now, with that said, guys, let's jump right into the update. This new deal, this rumor that's been swirl swirling around that Joe Manchin is willing to do a smaller package focusing on changing the tax code, specifically rolling back a lot of the tax cuts that former President Trump put in place, and how this relates to benefits, how this could actually lead to an increase in Social Security benefits. Well, first of all, we all know that benefits are funded by the payroll tax, which goes into the trust fund and creates the pot of money that we use to fund Social Security benefits. At the same time, we had President Biden promise to increase taxes on the rich to then provide more funding to increase Social Security benefits, SSI and SSDI. Specifically, he said he wants to increase benefits to 125% of the federal poverty level and to 100% of the federal poverty level in the case of specifically SSI. Then when you take into account the fact that we have midterm elections coming up in November, President Biden still has not delivered on this campaign promise. And we have a lot of experts saying that Democrats should be focusing on benefits, trying to increase benefits across the board as promised. And this would help them in the polls to potentially prevent a red wave, meaning what we expect now is Republicans to take control of the House and the Senate, which would leave President Biden as a sitting duck and most likely won't get any of these things on his agenda done going forward. So the main question here is, would Joe Manchin be willing to include these tax changes as well? He wants to focus on rolling back a lot of the tax cuts that Trump put in place. A lot of these tax cuts mainly benefited millionaires and businesses. And a lot of them are confusing benefits that the average person doesn't really understand. So it's really hard for most people to understand how this really affected the wealthy a lot better than it affected the middle and lower income folks. Now, things like depreciation. Usually when you buy an asset, you have to depreciate that. Basically, it's just a tax deduction over many years. They made some changes which allowed them to deduct things immediately in bulk, leading to massive tax cuts for the rich. Now, Joe Manchin wants to change those things, but one thing we have to find out now is, is he willing to change the payroll tax as well and not necessarily increase the actual tax, but maybe expand the amount of people who are taxed. As of now, if you make about $140,000 per year, beyond that, you no longer pay into the payroll tax, meaning you no longer pay into the Social Security Trust Fund. That is something that Democrats have been wanting to change. So if we can get a deal put together where Joe Manchin gets what he wants on the tax code changes, and then President Biden and people like Bernie Sanders get what they want in regards to increase benefits, this could be the perfect situation for Democrats to keep their promise, increase benefits across the board, help millions of seniors and people on benefits in this country, and at the same time, help themselves in the polls. Because we all know 
Whether you vote Democrat or Republican, Democrats have been getting hammered in the polls. And let me know in the comments, guys. Do you think Democrats deserve their terrible poll numbers? Or do you think a lot of this has been out of their control? A lot of people say that inflation would have happened regardless of which party was in power. But when you think about it, they spent the last year saying inflation was going to be transitory when they could have been getting ahead of it. And right now we could have been benefiting from some sort of package or policy that could have either dampened inflation or helped the American people directly with some kind of tax credits or direct stimulus checks. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Again, not trying to pick sides, but that is just what's happening in the news. So this is one of the main things we're monitoring now, folks. Will this deal come to fruition? Will negotiations pick up? And could we end up in a situation where Democrats focus on changing the tax code and include the payroll tax, which could increase benefits as well? So again, don't forget to subscribe. I will keep you posted as things develop. Now, to end this video, let's do a quick update on daily trending news. Let's see what's happening in politics, the stock market, and the economy at large. A lot of these things do affect seniors, whether it's directly or indirectly with things like inflation and potentially rising interest rates, which affect everybody across the board. Now on this channel, you know, we try and avoid crazy topics like war, but everybody's talking about Russia. And basically what's happening now is Russia is saying they're not gonna attack, but then they have more people at the border making it look like they in fact are. So this is something that's scaring the, it's scaring economists, it's scaring the stock market. And quite frankly, it's putting us in a situation where it's just another risk factor that experts are saying could put us in a potential recession. And the immediate effect really could be increasing oil prices and increasing gas prices at the pump. Russia being one of the largest exporters of oil in the world. Also trending is the Federal Reserve. Now, yesterday's minutes of the January Federal Reserve meeting provided a few new details for investors who are now pricing in at least six rate hikes this year. So this is expected to be a huge year for an increase in interest rates, which obviously will make things more expensive when it comes to taking loans. Like, so if you're in the market to buy a car or buy a house, things will get more expensive and people are worried that it might actually push down housing prices, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, cryptocurrency has also been in the news, and there is a disagreement between the White House officials and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, which is slowing the arrival of a U.S. crypto strategy. Yellen is said to be concerned about the implication of any executive order for a digital dollar. Industry executives also warn that the U.S. scattergun approach to regulation and lack of clarity is giving the advantage to other nations. They even say that other government-backed coins could threaten the dollar's global dominance. So essentially what they're referring to is the White House released a statement last month that they expect to release an executive action detailing how exactly to regulate cryptocurrency. Now, we all know things like Bitcoin has been a lucrative investment. As little as $10,000 invested six years ago would be a million dollars today. At the same time, that comes with extreme risk and a lot of people are worried that there's not enough regulation and shady behavior is happening behind the scenes. So with Democrats looking for a way to regulate cryptocurrency, it looks like Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is disagreeing on exactly how to move forward with that and that is delaying their executive order. And a lot of people think that once this executive order is released, the crypto market could actually crash, but we'll have to wait and see. Interest rates are also shooting up and in the last two months, the 30-year fixed mortgage on a house went up from about 2.8 to 3.8%. And this is in anticipation of the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. So if you're in the market to buy a house, things are getting a little bit more tough now as well. Reports are also showing that new houses being built began to slow in January as well. Now, this could potentially help keep prices up on older houses, even though interest rates are expected to continue to rise. Now, one of the main issues when it comes to Russia and the Ukraine is experts are saying that if there is an invasion, prices will only continue to get worse and inflation will continue to get worse, even worse than it currently is. Now, President Biden recently said that prices in the U.S. will go up if Russia invades. So this obviously will affect everyone across the board, but if, especially people who are on a fixed income as these small bumps in inflation really affect the bottom line strongly when you're on a fixed income every single month. So 
Let's take a quick look, see what the talking heads are saying about Russia, how this will affect inflation, and what President Biden just said, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. To go in, his words again, Edward Lawrence joins us from the White House. Let, let me ask you this, Edward, what would Russia gain economically if it did invade? Yeah, there's a lot of answers to that, but the, the short one is billions of dollars. Now, Russia has already said that it's taken steps to uh, insulate itself and its energy industry from possible sanctions that could come because of an invasion should it happen. Now, President Biden says he has no plans to call President Putin, but says an in invasion could be imminent. Listen to him here. They have not moved any of their troops out. They've moved more troops in, number one. Number two, we have reason to believe that they are engaged in a false flag operation to have an excuse to go in. Every indication we have is they're prepared to go into Ukraine, attack Ukraine. And Russian's finance minister says should there be sanctions, they will rely on budget surpluses, their reserves of gold, as well as their uh, reserves of foreign exchange currency they have also. All right, so we're not going to go too deep into this whole potential war situation, but the bottom line here is this could lead to economic sanctions, meaning that the import-export industry across the globe could be a complete cluster bomb, which we already know how things are already a cluster bomb when it comes to supply chain issues. So more embargoes would make, and sanctions would make things even worse, and that would not bode well for the American people when it comes to inflation and prices on things going up even more. Now, we'll continue to monitor things, folks, and always show things from the perspective of seniors and people on benefits and how all of these things will affect you in regards to inflation, interest rates, and the potential for benefits to be increased as well. So with that said, guys, that's the update for today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you on the next video.